Once we have an expression in a programming language like OCaml, evaluation is the process for calculating the value of an expression. For example, 2 plus 8 is an expression, and when we evaluate the expression, we get the value 10. 10 by itself is also an expression, but it's already a value, so it evaluates to itself. In OCaml, every expression has a type that groups the values together based on what sort of operations can be used for that type. For example, integers are one of the most common types we'll use in OCaml. Integer values include values like 5 and negative 1. OCaml's standard library also includes several operators for working with integers. We can use the operators for integer addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to form integer expressions. And there are other operators as well, like the mod operator, for computing the remainder after integer division. In OCaml, every type has a name, given as a type expression. The type expression for integers is simply int, but eventually we'll see type expressions that can be more complex. You've probably seen some of these type expressions already in the OCaml REPL. When you type an integer expression, for example, you'll see that the REPL provides both the value of the expression as well as the type expression that describes the value's type. If we want to represent real numbers in OCaml, we can use the type for floating point numbers, represented by the type expression float. Values like 1.5, 3.14, and negative 2 with a decimal point at the end are all examples of values of type float. Importantly, the operators for working with floating point numbers are different from the operators for working with integers. For example, if we tried to use the integer addition operator to add two floating point numbers together, we'd see an error. OCaml is expecting the arguments to integer addition to be integer expressions, but we've provided a floating point expression. Instead, OCaml has other operators for working with floating point numbers, plus dot for addition, minus dot for subtraction, asterisk dot for multiplication, and slash dot for division. Having separate operators for integers and floating point numbers takes some getting used to, especially if you're used to a language that doesn't have this distinction, but we'll soon see the value of a strong type system that prevents us from using values in inappropriate ways. In general, OCaml can, via a process known as type inference, automatically determine the types of expressions without us needing to explicitly say what the type of each expression is. For example, when we type 42 into the REPL, OCaml knows, without us telling it, that it's an int. But sometimes it can be useful to explicitly notate in our programs that a particular expression is of a certain type. We can do so using the typing operator, which in OCaml is the colon. On the left side of the colon, we provide a value expression, like 42, and on the right side of the colon, we provide a corresponding type expression like int. If we enter such a typing into the OCaml REPL, surrounded by parentheses, we'll see that it evaluates to 42, the same as if we hadn't explicitly included the int typing. So why would we ever use the typing operator if OCaml can automatically determine the types of expressions? Well, these typings can be useful because OCaml will generate an error if we ever try to use a typing where the value expression doesn't match the corresponding type expression. For example, if we provided the value expression 42, but the type expression float, then OCaml will generate an error before our code runs, letting us know that the expression doesn't match the type float. In this case, that's hopefully fairly clear to see, but in more complex programs, it can be especially valuable to have OCaml let us know that our expectation for the type of an expression doesn't match with what OCaml has determined the type of the expression to be, potentially catching bugs in our code immediately before we've even run our program. If we're working with text instead of numbers, OCaml has a few other types that will be helpful. The char type represents a single character, and we can specify a character value by including that character in single quotes. The string type, meanwhile, is used for a sequence of characters. It might be the empty string, it might contain a single character, or it might contain multiple characters. 
we specify strings in OCaml using double quotes instead of single quotes. Just as there are operators for working with integers and floating point numbers, there are also operators for working with strings. For example, the string concatenation operator is an operator that takes two string arguments and gives us a string value that is the result of the two arguments joined together. Another important type in OCaml is bool, the boolean type for representing truth values. There are two truth values represented by the literals true and false. There are several operators for working with truth values. The conjunction operator, represented as two ampersands, takes two truth values and checks if both of them are true. The disjunction operator, represented as two vertical bars, takes two truth values and checks if one or the other is true, or both. And the negation operator, represented using the keyword not, takes a single truth value argument and inverts it flipping true to false and false to true. There are also operators that take values of other types and return a truth value. For example, the equality operator, the single equal sign, checks if two values are equal to each other. So two equals two is an expression that compares these two integers against each other and returns the value true since they're equal. 1.5 equals 2.5 compares these two floating point numbers and returns false since they are not equal. And for an example with strings, hello equals hello returns true. You might notice that the equality operator here can be applied to values of different types. We first used it to compare two integers, and then we used it to compare two floating point numbers, and then two strings. This differs from the operators we've seen before, which only allow arguments of a single type. We'll explore this idea later in the course, but for now, know that the equality operator, along with other comparison operators like less than, greater than, less than or equal, greater than or equal, and not equal, all can apply to different types of values as long as the two values we're comparing are of the same type. We couldn't compare an int and a float for equality in this way, for instance. One of the most important uses for truth values is to conditionally compute different values. If an expression is true, we might want one value to be computed. If an expression is false, we might want another value to be computed. To achieve this, we can use an OCaml conditional expression, which takes the following form. If expression test, then expression true, else expression false. Here, expression test is the truth value we want to check. If the test expression is true, then this whole expression evaluates to the value of expression true. And if the test expression is false, then the whole expression evaluates to the value of expression false. Expression test needs to be a bool expression, but expression true and expression false could be of any type, as long as those types match with each other. So we could have an expression like, if two is less than one, then a else b. Here, two is less than one is our test expression. a is the true expression, and b is the false expression. The test expression is false, two is not less than one. So the whole expression evaluates to the value of the false expression, which in this case is the string b. In OCaml, every expression needs to have a type representing what sort of value that expression is. But sometimes in a programming language, we'll have expressions that don't need to compute any value, where we don't care about what the expression is, but rather what the expression does. By that we mean an expression like two plus eight, we care about because of what it is, an integer. Other expressions though, might instead be used as commands, printing a string to standard output or writing data to a file, for example, are commands that don't need to compute a value. We don't care what type they are, we care about what these commands do. But again, in OCaml, every expression needs to have a type. So OCaml has a special type called unit that we can use for expressions that don't need to compute a value. There's only one value of type unit, and that's this open and closed parentheses unit value. We'll use this any time we need to use an expression whose value is irrelevant. There's one other kind of value that's worth discussing here, and that's functions. 
OCaml as a functional programming language treats functions as first class values, meaning that they're values in the same way that integers, floating point numbers, strings, and other values are. Functions can be passed as arguments to other functions, functions can be returned from other functions. And every function in OCaml has a type. For example, let's take the square root function, which calculates the square root of a floating point number. For example, if we take the square root of 2.0, we get a floating point value that's about 1.414. But what's the type of square root itself? If we just type sqrt into the REPL, we see that the function has type float arrow float, usually pronounced float to float. This means that the function takes a float argument as input, since float is to the left of the arrow, and produces a float output, since there's also a float to the right of the arrow. The ability to use functions as values will enable some powerful programming techniques that we'll soon see in the course. So now we've seen a variety of types in OCaml, integers, floating point numbers, characters, strings, truth values, the unit type, and function types. It's clear that OCaml is a typed language, but what do we really mean when we talk about OCaml being typed? For one, OCaml is a statically typed language. By that, we mean that the type of an expression can be determined just by looking at the expression, without actually running the code. This is in contrast to dynamically typed languages like Python or JavaScript, where the types of an expression might not be determined until the code is run. OCaml is also a strongly typed language. This means that the programming system will enforce type constraints and prevent us from using values in ways that are inappropriate for their type. If we try to divide a string by an integer or compare a character with a floating point number or use any other value in a way that's not consistent with its type, OCaml will tell us about that even before the program is run, preventing bugs before they happen. As you start programming in OCaml, you might initially find it annoying when OCaml won't run your code because of a type error. But in general, a type error at compile time is preferable to errors that only show up once the code is already deployed and running, at which point it might be too late. OCaml's type system helps us write more correct code by catching errors earlier, and thanks to its type inference system, we often don't need to even specify the types of expressions ourselves since OCaml can automatically determine those types for us.